The game is afoot, not a word. Into your clothes and come. I'll wait for you in the sitting room. I've just received a note from Inspector Lestrade, a letter from the suburbs. He is in need of my presence. Whenever he has asked for my assistance, it has always turned out to be entirely justified. I fancy that every one of his cases has found its way into your collection. Uh, yes, they all seem worthy of... However, I regret your fatal habit of looking at everything from the point of view of a story instead of a scientific exercise. Oh, Holmes, you... I beg your pardon, I digress. It would be much better to examine this letter than to try to convince you. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. A wax seal with the monogram E.B. A wax... The Brackenstall family coat of arms. I can tell from Lestrade's handwriting that he was in a hurry when he wrote this letter. So, what is it, Holmes? Promising, as always. It appears to be a case of murder. So you believe that Sir Eustace is dead? I should say so. Lestrade wouldn't have sent for me for less. His writing shows considerable agitation, and he is not an emotional man. These people belong to high society. The quality of the writing paper, the E.B. monogram, their coat of arms. The crime was committed before midnight. Holmes, how can you possibly tell? Well, it is all thanks to Lestrade. He wrote his letter at 3.30 in the morning. Imagine the chain of events before that. The local police had to be called in. Scotland Yard was notified. Lestrade himself had to make haste there and finally compose the letter he sent to me. All of that makes for a fair night's work. It makes sense. Lestrade also speaks of the woman he released. That seems to indicate that she had been held somewhere during the crime. Much time has been wasted. Let us find a cab and go to Abbey Grange immediately. I live in hope of an interesting morning. Ah, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, here you are. I'm very glad that you have come, but perhaps I should not have troubled you after all. And why is that? Lady Brackenstall has come to her senses, and she has given so clear an account of the affair that there is not much left for us to do. Do you remember that Lewisham gang of burglars? What, the three Randalls? Exactly. The father and two sons. It's their work. They stole a silver service which is of great value. Sir Eustace Brackenstall is dead, then? Yes. His head was knocked in with his own poker. A violent act of aggression? Yes, the poor lady. She has had a most dreadful experience. She was assaulted and tied to a chair. But I think that you would best see her and hear her account of the facts. She is in the morning room with her maid, to raise a right. Where is the body of the deceased? In the dining room. We haven't touched anything. All right. I'm going to examine it. Very good, Watson. Sir Warthen Brackenstall. Lord George Brackenstall.
Ladies, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting Inspector Lestrade in this investigation. Mr. Holmes, I am the wife of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. We were married only a year ago. I am sorry for your loss. Please accept my deepest condolences. I suppose that it is no use my attempting to conceal that our marriage has not been a happy one. I fear that all would tell you that, even if I were to attempt to deny it. Can you describe to me the events of yesterday evening? Is it really necessary? I have already told Inspector Lestrade all that happened. Yes, madam, it is. I will tell you then. Sir Eustace retired about half-past ten. I sat in this room until after eleven, absorbed in a book. Before I went upstairs, I entered the dining room to fetch a candle and... Oh, God. Please, go on. As I approached the French window... I found myself face to face with an elderly, broad-shouldered man who had just stepped into the room. Close behind the first man, I saw two others. One of them struck me a savage blow with his fist and felled me unconscious to the ground. And then? When I came to myself, I found that they had secured me tightly to a dining room chair. It was at that instant my unfortunate husband entered the room. He fought with the intruders? Yes, I think he had heard them for he was holding his stick. But they were three, and he eventually succumbed. One of them, the elder one, struck him a terrible blow with the poker. I fainted once more. When I opened my eyes, they had withdrawn. Then my brave Teresa came to my assistance. Did these three villains steal anything? Yes. I found that they had taken the silver from the sideboard, but you can see for yourself in the dining room. You mentioned that your marriage was not a happy one. Was there anything specific that was troubling you? He was not a nice man when he was drunk, and he suffered from dark moods, but nothing else. The bruises on your hands are at least one week old. Your husband caused those bruises? Oh, do you? Yes, he did. He was very angry at the time. Out of control. Again. Sir Eustace was a drunkard. To be tied to such a man for life is worse than death. Your ladyship? Teresa, I would like to hear your testimony. Certainly, sir. As I sat by my bedroom window, I saw three men in the moonlight down by the lodge gate. But I thought nothing of it at the time. Oh, if I'd known. And then? I went to bed, and it was more than an hour after that I heard my mistress scream. And down I ran, to find her tied to the chair and him on the floor with his head smashed. That's all I know. This photograph of Lady Brackenstall and her maid, Teresa, was...
So the lady and her maid came from Australia a year and a half ago on this ship. Lord Brigham Brackenstall. The body is still in the dining room where the murder took place. You should examine the body of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. So, Watson, what have you learned from examining Sir Eustace's body? Well, I can confirm that the death was instant. Sir Eustace was facing his attacker when he received the blow to his head. There are no other apparent injuries. That must be the murder weapon. The head was cracked with the force of the blow. Barefoot, he had therefore been in bed and did not have time to fully dress. Quite a large stick, a formidable weapon. It is covered in blood. Sir Eustace might have struck his head upon it while falling from the blow. A fur trader's cabin. A deer hunt. The hunting scene. An empty silverware box. It appears that the intruders have stolen the contents. This candlestick is valuable. It is interesting that it was not also stolen. These wine bottles are expensive and mostly from France. A bottle of wine is missing here. The criminals did not thoroughly ransack the house. They only took a little silverware. A decanter standing next to the open bottle. An inseparable pair indeed. Chateau Calon Ségur. French wine. Grand Cru. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible beeswing. There is beeswing at the bottom, as if the wine had not been decanted before being poured. This glass has some wine. It is rather strange that only one of these glasses has dregs of bees wing inside it, while the other two are clear. The death was instant. This door leads to the upstairs bed. Antique hunting weapons. The hunting scene.
appears that the bell rope was cut by someone taller than me. A first leave my mare there are three glasses on the dining room table I was wondering if oh I forgot when I came to myself the first time each of them had a glass in his hand they might have been a father and his two sons they talked together in whispers and then they left your ladyship The description of the Randall gang provided by Lady Brackenstall is identical to the one in the Times article. Please leave my Mary alone. She suffered so much she deserves some rest. Hmm. These scratches are most definitely made by the picture frame. This is Sir Eustace's safe. Lady Brackenstall, could you open this wall safe? No, it is my husband's safe. I do not know the combination. We have to open it. Your ladyship? Let us try to... This safe can be cracked. I only have to pay attention. The dial will vibrate when it is set to the correct number.
Antique coins, possibly of value, but it is common practice to keep one's valuables in a safe. Please leave my... Sir Eustace's doctor speaks of his violent behaviour. Yes, Sir Eustace was an extremely violent man. A detestable human being, to be more precise. It is true that he once threw a decanter at me, and all because I dared to stand up to him in defence of my mistress. Sly devil. God forgive me that I should speak of him so now that he's dead. But a devil he was, if ever one walked the earth. We met him only 18 months ago. She'd only just arrived in London. Yes, it was her first voyage. She'd never been from home before. One her with his title and his money and his false London ways. If she made a mistake, she has paid for it, if ever a woman did. She doesn't have any friends here, so it was specially hard for her. Lord Ramsay Bra This door A hunter's This is a simple one, isn't it, Holmes? A trapper's hut. A trapper's hut. Sailors not. This rope was handled by the murderers. I will take it with me. This is...
What do you know about Sir Eustace, Inspector? What was his reputation? A charming man when sober, but an absolute demon when he was drunk. In such moments, he was apparently capable of anything. Why, once he splashed fuel on Lady Brackenstall's dog and set it alight. Another day, he threw a decanter of wine at Miss Wright's head. Hmm, the alcohol seemed to madden him. To the point that we were forced to intervene several times to avoid a scandal. Come on, Toby. We need the best nose in the British Empire on this case. I agree with you, Toby, that Watson's shoe is preferable to Mrs. Hudson's cold cuts. I agree with you, Toby, that Watson's shoe is preferable to Mrs. Hudson. Let us see how the rope was cut. The fibers at the end of the rope are smoothly cut. Let us try to find out what tool was used to cut the rope. The fibers from this cut appear to be different. If I cut the rope with a knife, it matches the original. I agree with you, Toby, that Watson's shoe is preferable to Mrs. Hudson's cold cuts. Search, Toby. The intruders entered the shed for some reason when they were making off with the silverware. The scent leads to the well. I shall check it. Oh, oh. 
The intruder's trail is lost behind this wall. The criminals left the house through the French window. They walked to the shed, then across to the well, before fleeing by climbing over the wall. I wonder why they chose such a winding route. There's something glittering at the bottom there. This small gardening tool. Bags of seed. Some empty bags were recently moved. This old suitcase sounds hollow. It must be empty. Silverware. This is hardly a coincidence. The Brackenstall coat of arms. We found your silverware, Lady Brackenstall. It had not been taken very far. Is that true? I am very thankful to you, Mr. Holmes. Your ladyship? We found your mistress's silverware. Oh, that's good news. You really are as clever as they say. Indeed. <laughs> Inspector, I have recovered the stolen silverware. You are a wizard, Mr. Holmes. And where is it? In the garden well. Excuse me? Unique, isn't it? Rather absurd. What is the point of stealing silverware and then throwing it down into a well? Perhaps it was used as a temporary hiding place, or simply the thieves wanted to get rid of it. It is up to us to solve this mystery.
Here it is. The shipping company, the Adelaide Southampton London Line, and its address. Interesting. It must be the place where they keep the records, including the one for the crew of the Rock of Gibraltar. I think that if you pretend you're from Scotland Yard, they'll give it to you without any problems. But I have another solution. I'll call in the specialist. Wiggins, could you come upstairs, please? At your service, Mr. Holmes. I need a register, my young friend. If you could borrow it, there will be half a guinea for every one of you. I need the crew list of the Rock of Gibraltar in 1893 and their current employment. I'm straight on it, Mr. Holmes. Do you really think they'll find it, Holmes? My secret police is better than the Yard in many ways. Here it is, Mr. Holmes. But we can't take it back. It's too risky. Put it on the table. I'll take care of it. Good work, young Wiggins. This list shows the senior officers of the Rock of Gibraltar, on which Lady Brackenstall and her maid made their voyage. Lady Brackenstall does not know anyone in England. This must mean that someone on this list is our mysterious visitor. And these are the lists of the senior officers of the Adelaide Southampton London Line ships. Let us find out who was in London upon November the 7th. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. I do not think that this sailor has any connection to the case. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. Mr. Jack Crocker was in London upon the date of the crime, and he is due to depart in two days. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. This This officer is still this This Crocker. Do you think it would be interesting to meet him? Our young friend should be able to find him. Wiggins, could you find a way to bring this Captain Crocker here to us? Here? Holmes, that could be dangerous. No problem, Mr. Holmes.
Mr. Holmes, I was informed that you were looking for me, and I'd like to know why. Yes, it is important that we talk. You will soon understand why. You are acquainted with Lady Mary Brackenstall, are you not? Yes, I think I do remember her, from when I was first officer, but I still don't see... It seems your relationship went beyond that of mere passenger and first officer. How dare you? Indeed, how reckless a feeling is love, particularly if one is prepared to commit a murder in its name. Explain yourself this instant! You are aware that the murder made the headlines of the morning press. You read the newspaper report, but to your dismay, found it much fabricated. Once you learned that I wanted to see you, you came straight away. You needed to know what I had found. You... and what do you know? That evening, you were with Lady Brackenstall, despite the danger. I'm not afraid, Mr. Holmes. Besides, all of this is just guesswork. You would be right. If there was no evidence. What then? Lady Brackenstall was tied to a chair on the night of the murder. And it was you who tied her up. You call that evidence? Yes, as she was tied with a sailor's knot. Your handiwork. So, it's a sailor who's done it. That proves nothing, Mr. Holmes. I'm not the only sailor in London right now. Your theory is flawed, anyway. On the night of the murder, I was aboard the Sharp. I was supervising the repair of a porthole. At night? It was an emergency. There was a leak. You can ask the ship's carpenter. He can confirm. I'm sure that he can. Perfect. In that case, we have nothing more to talk about. Good evening, gentlemen. Holmes, what should we do now? Would you like to check his alibi? No. There is no doubt that these men will testify in his favor, and there will be no way to check. So, what then? So, we must work with what we have. We have all the puzzle pieces. Now I understand why you dissected the bell rope.
Ladies, I know the full story. You are both guilty, are you not? Mr. Holmes, I can explain everything. No, madam, he's bluffing. It is no use. Your husband was a violent man, a cruel man. Your argument last night ended tragically, with him stumbling and falling, fatally striking his head upon the fireplace grate. However, your mise en scène to divert suspicion was unnecessary. You should have admitted the truth. The truth is often subjective, Mr. Holmes. Not to me. What will you tell Inspector Lestrade? He will find nothing, as he handed the case over to me. Farewell, ladies. Inspector, I am afraid that the murderers have escaped us. What? Do you mean to tell me that you failed? Never thought I'd live to see the day. I mentioned the murderers, not the case. It is obvious that the crime was committed by three criminals who cannot be the Randalls. You really think so? You only need to find a gang of three thugs wandering around. I can trust you to do that. If they exist, I'll catch them. You'll find someone, I have no doubt of it. Goodbye, Inspector. Wiggins, could you ask Mr. Crocker to come here again, please? Right away. Why did you make me come here again, Mr. Holmes? It is over. I know that it was you who killed Sir Eustace Brackenstall. What? I know, because of the height at which the rope was cut. The knife used was a sea knife. The knots were sailor's knots, and not least the sheer force that was put behind the killing blow. And because you are the only one who knows Lady Mary Brackenstall in London. And because you love her. It's true. It is time for you to tell us the whole truth. I admit that I loved Mary madly from the first day that I met her. But I never did come to visit her. For I believed that she was in a happy household. When I talked to her maid who told me everything, I was insane with rage. I was due to set sail for six months away. I wanted only to see her again. But it turned into a damnable nightmare when he barged in. He dared raise his hand to her. He! He was not even worthy of licking her boots. Oh, I regret nothing. I admit I killed a monster out of love for her. She will forgive me if she is able. Lady Brackenstall already forgave you. She said nothing. Mary! But that makes her an accomplice as well as her maid. It places her in danger yet again. Mr. Holmes! You would not have managed to protect her. Till I die, do you hear me? Here is a letter that sets everything clear and it is the one that should be disclosed to the police. I am the only culprit. 
Mary had nothing to do with it. Now it is time to end this. You should have let me die. How can I live if Mary suffers? I am sorry, Captain Crocker, but there has been quite enough death in this case. Inspector, I give you Sir Eustace's killer. He tried his best to perform his own justice. Well, I'm not surprised. Yes, it was me. I confess. Here is a piece of evidence that can be used in court. Perfect. A case that went smoothly for once. <laughs>